And finally, in regards with music, uh, sometimes we think that music is really likely, we can use it a lot in order to promote these values and to make them think about what do you think this music, how do you feel while you are you listening to, the, to this music or uh, where do you think this uh, song comes from or this kind of, of question. So music is not that difficult to implement the intercultural axis. So this activity aims to know instrument from all around the world and experience diverse situations that develop attitudes of tolerance, respect, or solidarity. Uh, we are going to need a book, I'll show you later, and also some recycled materials to build this uh, instrument. Well, in this case I've used this tail, okay? I would like to say that many researchers says, say that Mm, ideal clean materials are those that either are adapted or created by you as teachers. Why? Because you, are, you really know your teaching context and you really know what's your student's level. So that's why I thought this was a good idea to bring here because even though this tale is in Spanish, what you have to do at first is try to adapt it. So you're going to take maybe just some pieces of this tale, translate it into an easy and readable English for students, and then bring it to the classroom, okay? So that's why I use it. Why, what else should I use it? Which criteria did I follow? To have represented different uh, countries around the world. So not only they are going to learn about the guitar or the typical uh, music here in Spain, but also about what other countries or which materials other countries use to build their instruments and how they usually sound to them and so on. So as I've said before, first translate and adapt your tale and then introduce this music to the students. So first of all, you as teacher tell the tale to students. Okay, as Elena explained before, when we were, she, was, she was explaining the um, cooking activity, the first thing you're going to do while you are reading, anytime you read the name of an instrument that maybe the students don't even know it's an instrument because it can be an instrument from the Congo or wherever, and maybe it can be in Spanish as well, uh, you ask anyone in the classroom to draw it according to some description you're going to give them. And then they have to guess how do they think it sounds. So they have to imitate this sound with the objects they have around them. Then they are going to represent the tail using these objects they found around them and representing all these sounds. Because through this tail, if you have the chance to have a look to it, you will see that it explains not only how it's, it's the instrument is, but also how it sounds. Is it loud, is it not loud? It seems like you are listening to a bird. It seems you are listening to snakes, like uh, through the forest and so on. So you're gonna give them some clues and then they will represent it in groups. And finally, if you have time enough, you can work in collaboration with arts and craft and create some instruments according to what they've learned in this day. So then in their groups they can compose a short melody or song. So you will see how they are really motivated to try to get the best imitation of the sound that is described in the, in the tale that at the same time are songs typical or sounds really typical from this different context. And to conclude, so after doing all of these tasks, the teacher can organize an assembly in which students express their feelings. How did you listen while you were listening to music from Asia? Or how did you feel while you were listening? Or how did you think that children dance this kind of uh, music and so on? And also, then you can go further and ask them, how do you think their lifestyle could be? Do you think they spend more time dancing in the street or do you think the music is really important from, for them? Do you think they are expressing their feelings through these sounds? So it's really interesting to make that thing and develop this empathy in the students since they are really young. 
So just some final remarks before uh, uh, work on the activity I'm going to explain to you in a minute. I would say that intercultural competence is needed in, co in current societies, so it should be trained since early years. Sometimes I've read uh, it's really debatable when is the best age to start working this kind of values or this kind of critical thinking skills and so on. And um, I've, I always find that as soon as you start, the better results and the better citizens you will have in the future. So then they will be able to make any difference in their context. Second, clear teachers should take into account when planning their sessions. As I've said at the beginning, not all contents let you do any kind of this activity, but take into account that some of them are really likely that sometimes we are not aware because we don't really control what intercultural education aims at. So I've prepared a copy in which I, can, I would like to give you some examples of contents. So I've divided natural science, social science, art and music. I divided them. So then you can have an idea about which contents, depending in the block of contents you are, depending on the subjects you are working with, you can think about an activity, even though it's really small, a short in time, maybe you just need 15 minutes, something. Whatever you do, it, it will make a difference. So I hope this photocopy is really helpful for you in the future. And then bear in mind that the intercultural axis not only refers to English-speaking countries' cultures, okay? So it's not only about St. Patrick's Day. We should go farther and think about other continents, other countries in which they should learn from them and we should learn from them. And finally, it can be promoted in collaboration with language teachers as well. For example, if we know that we are going to plan a, an activity for the second term and you're going to need a specific vocabulary or, or specific sentences, why don't you work with the English language teachers? Or why don't you work if you are going to do it in music with the arts and craft teacher and so on? So this collaboration always is really helpful, okay? So, what I want you to do now is, having a look to this photocopy that Elena gave, gave to you, and I want you to work in groups again, as I've said, bef uh, as I, we've done before with Elena. We're going to give you a template, okay? So I want you to try to think about one activity. I don't mind which subject you are going to use, okay? So feel free, because maybe it's the first time you're going to design an activity, taking into account all of this we've mentioned. So in your groups, think about first which subject, okay? Then you can have a look to this list and choose which block of content or which content I'm going to use in order to introduce and implement the intercultural axis. Then also take into account which level? So it's going to be for first year or sixth, sixth year students and so on. And complete yes, the photocopy explaining first again the name of the activity because we are going to vote for it. Okay, So the first thing you should do is decide, make a decision about what's going to be the name for your activity. Then you also have to write down in which subject you're going to do it and which content are you going to use to implement this axis. Then please carefully explain your objective or objectives, which other competencies. Because even though intercultural competence is not within the curriculum, it's not explicit, you cannot see it within the list. So. We have seven key competencies and you cannot find them intercultural competence. But there are others that are really or share some common points with intercultural uh, competence. For example, uh, social and civic, anyone has that it? No. Cultural awareness or social and civic competencies or cultural expressions. Okay, so if you with this activity 
could guess which other curricular competence I'm promoting, I'm developing through this activity, you have to write it down as well. Then the procedure in which you're going to explain just the guideline of your activity and finally how good you evaluate it. Okay? So again, in groups, as you've done before, the first thing, the name of the activity, because then we are going to vote for them. If you have any question or whatever, please ask me, okay? Thank you. <laughs>